have you always wanted to have a flashing effect in your Unity game for warnings, aesthetics, and all that cool stuff without needing to do all the animations and all that hassle? Well, today is a very fortunate day for you because you just came across the right video for you. Hello guys, it's Zach at CryptoGrounds here. Welcome back to another Unity tutorial video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the like button for YouTube algorithm, and if you also learned something new as well. If you want to share this video with your friends who also want to learn something new as well, make sure you do that. And subscribe to my channel if you're new, and turn on that bell for future notifications. So, like I said earlier, we're basically going to be uh, changing the background color and the text color. We're going to be creating a flashing effect, and this can work for anything, buttons, anything with an image component. That, ha that can change color. So I'm going to make a, an empty game object real quick by clicking that plus sign, create empty. Set the position to all zeros. Click on that add component and I'm gonna create a new script called flashing effect. You can call it whatever you would like. Okay, I have created the script so we can just double click on this and it should open up right to our IDE. So I'm gonna start with a clean script so we can get rid of the first two lines since we're not gonna be using anything from the system collections and system collections generic namespaces. That's what these are. And instead we're going to be importing the unityengine.ui namespace. If you don't know what a namespace is, it's basically a package that comes with a bunch of methods and classes and stuff. So when we are accessing the unityengine.ui namespace, we have access to all the Unity's related UI stuff such as images, text, all that good stuff. All that will be inside that namespace. Back to our script here. We are inside the public class flashing effect and this matches our script name here. So we're going to be working in here. So let's implement our UI first. So we're going to have an image and a text since that's what I just added into the project. What we can type here is public image background so this is our background image, and we want to make this public because we want to be able to access this inside the Unity editor. Now next, we need to add our hello world text in here. So what we can do is the same thing, make it public, type text, and we're going to name it hello world text. So inside our class, we have an image and a text object. Now what I'm also going to do is that since we need to change the color, I'm going to introduce two color variables, two colors that we want to switch between. So our first one is also going to be public. We're going to make this just red. And we're going to uh, make this a property by doing equal sign and this greater than sign and combine it together. And for me, it shows up as an arrow because that is a plugin. But you would have this arrow here and that would make it a property. A property in our situation with the arrow is where we create a variable with read-only access. A getter, or get, that's the key word, is where we can return the property's value. That's what we set it to. That's where we have the arrow and then whatever we set it to. So we're gonna set this color red to color.red. So now whenever we access red, it's gonna tell me, oh, this is equal to color.red. Next, I wanna add another color. I wanna keep it what we have right now, which is white. So we are going to set color white equal to color dot white. Back to what I was saying about the namespaces earlier I'd like to mention is that text is a class inside the unity engine dot UI namespace. See as I'm hovering over text right now for my IDE it shows that this is a class which is kind of what this is right it's a public class flashing effect. It's the same thing we are trying to access the classes inside this certain namespace that unity has created for us. So we have all of our variables and properties that we have. Now we need to actually do stuff with them. In order to do that, we need to create an update method. To do that, we want to do public void. If you don't know what the update is, then basically it just runs every frame, whatever is inside here. So now we have this update method. We need to add one more thing. We're going to make a color method. So this is a void method. Void is where we don't return anything. Now, if we change this to int update, obviously that'd be a little weird. That's where we have to return an integer. Now I'm going to show you an example except with color. So instead we're going to be making a color method called public color and we're just going to call this lerp red. For example, in here we're going to be basically determining what color 
the background, and the Hello World text is going to be. So this is where the flashing effect magic occurs, is in here. So in this lerp red method, we're going to be seeing this red underline under this curly brace right here. That's because the return statement is missing. We're not returning anything, which we are required to return a color. So we need to return a color, and that's going to be, we're going to be doing this by switching the color around. And how we do that is a method in color class called color.lerp. Color.lerp has three arguments, color A, color B. So for the third one, which is T, and that is represented for time, that is how often we're going to change this. Now, it's a bit more complex than that. If we put a constant number such as 0.1, it's not going to repeat. It's going to switch once, and basically that just determines how fast it's going to go. Now, how we're going to do this is by plugging an equation, and I will get to that later. So let's start with this method here. So we want to transition from white to red. So for our first color, we're going to put white, and for our second one, we're going to put red. So now for the time, now this is where the math equation comes into place. So in here, since this is a float, we're going to be using uh, Unity's mathf class, since we need to return a float, and mathf returns floats. And in here, we're going to be using something called sine. A sine is basically a wave that goes from negative 1 to 1 up and down. Of course, it's more complex than that. But if you want to learn what the sine wave looks like, then I would highly suggest you to Google it since this is not a math lecture. Basically, all we need to know is that it acts as a wave. So we know that we want to switch between white and red back and forth based on a variable we put in. Now, this variable is going to be time dot time. So you ask me, why do we want to do time dot time? Why don't we just put one? Now, if we do sine of one, we're obviously going to get some funky number if you put it in your calculator. The thing is that it's still a constant number, so it's only going to be going one direction, and then it's going to be done. It's going to transfer to the next color, and it's going to stop. When we use time dot time, we're basically plugging it into that sine wave, and it goes up and down from negative one to one. I'll show you guys a graph of this, what it looks like. So let's say sine of x, x is represented for time dot time, and this is what it would look like. So as x goes higher, as time dot time goes higher, it's going to keep fluctuating between negative 1 and 1, like that. So now what negative 1 does is that it makes the color go backwards. That's what we want. Now if we have it at 1, it will go forward. So it's going to alternate between going back and going back to 1. It's going to keep switching between one or the other. So back to our script here, we basically want to continuously be able to change the color over time. That's how this works. We have returned a color here. Now what do we do with this? What we can do in our update method is grab our background here and we're going to set the color equal to lerp red because lerp red is a color. We are returning a color, so we're setting this method as a color like this, which is the nice thing. It's very easy and it's portable. Also, you can make this into an expression body, which is the same thing with this arrow right here. So now this is an expression body. This only works with one line, one line of code, right? So we're only doing one thing here, so it makes things look really clean. Now what do we want for our hello world text? Well, we can do the same thing, hello world text.color. Color is a variable in the text class. So we want to set that to lerp red as well. So the issue we're going to experience here is that both the background and the text is red. So let's add another color. Let's add public color purple. Let's grab this purple from the background here. What we can do here is select this background here, go to the color in the image component here, click on it. And you see these three numbers right here for R, G, and B. We want to copy all these numbers over. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so you, they don't need to be exactly correct. You can round them up to the hundredth if you want or the thousandth decimal. But here we have 0 0.5, 0 0.48, 0 0.84. So this is R, G, and B. Now, in order to make our own color, all we got to do is type the keyword new color and we put in our three values here, 0 0.5, 0 0.48, and 0 0.84. Hold on, hold on, you are not done yet. You're not done yet. If you hover over this 0 0.5 here, argument type double is not assignable to parameter type 
float. So what, what does this mean? So if we hover over this uh, color right here, which is a constructor. So basically a constructor is a very unique method. A constructor is what defines that class given a certain variables. As you can see, it's basically constructing what the class is. It, hence why it's called constructor. Constructor for color here says that we need three float variables, R, G, and B. So 0 0.5, however, is not a float. It's a double. However, how do we make it a float? Well, we can do two things. We can either cast as a float, where you type in float and wrap it around parentheses like this, or you can, type, you can put in the prefix F, which converts it to a float as well. I think this is much easier. So make sure you put F in front of all of these numbers here to convert them to floats. If you'd like to learn more about what floats and doubles are, I'd highly recommend you to check out my C-Sharp Crash Course Episode 4 for variables and you'll learn a lot there as well. So now we have our purple color and the neat thing about my IDE is that it underlines it with the color that we have here. Visual Studio, if you're using that, might do that as well. I honestly don't remember, but we have red, purple, and white. So what we can do here is copy and paste this method and rename this to lerp purple. However, that's kind of redundant. We're doing the same thing over and over again, and we want to do less work in the long in the long term. So what we can do is get rid of lerp red. We're just going to rename this to lerp, and we're going to take in two parameters, and that is our before and after color. So what we can do here is type in color, and this will be our first color. Okay, so right now it's only taking in one variable. So remember, as I was saying earlier, how we right here, these are arguments and these are arguments here as well. These are parameters. This is what we take in and what we use inside our method. So we want to add a second one. So you put comma color, second color. OK, and any method can have any amount of parameters as you need. You can even implement so now we can replace this white and red with the, our two parameters here, which is first color, which we'll replace with white, and second color we'll replace with red. Cool, so now we can start to change things around here. So obviously we're gonna have to rename lerp red with lerp. So now in our lerp method, we need to take in two parameters each, or two arguments each. So remember, our background's gonna go from purple to white and back. So our first color is going to be purple. So we have our variable here, lerp. Our first color is purple. And our second color is going to be white. So we could just put white here. For our second one, it's going to change from white to red. So we want our first color to be white and our second color to be red. Just like that. There you go. We successfully have created a flashing effect in Unity. Let's go test it out. Before we pursue, we need to head to our game object here, which I forgot to rename to flashing effect. We need to assign our background image and our hello world text. Simply just drag it like this. And this money per second could just be called hello world text. So now when we run start, we should see some flashing going on. Cool. Now it switches between purple and white. Ah, satisfying. This is going slow, so let's say we want to speed this up. Let's go back to our lerp here, and we have time.time. .time. So we can add in a third argument if we want to, or a third parameter. I'm going to do that, and this is going to be a float, and this is going to be called speed. So what this speed will do is that it's going to multiply time.time. .time. So now the color will change however often our speed is however more often our speed is. So now our lerps are red right here. We want to add in a number here. So let's say I want the background to update uh, two times faster. And I want the hello world to flash four times faster. So what we're going to see here is that hello world is going to change two times faster than the background because four divided by two is two, obviously. So we're going to save this. Go back to our game scene right here and click play. So now you can see it's more often. So you can do a lot of stuff here as well. Cool. 
If you enjoy this video and if you learned something new, make sure you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Share this video with your friends if you want them to learn something new as well. Subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed my content and turn on the bell for future notifications. If you want to support my channel, all you gotta do is click that join button below. Here are the instructions. All you gotta do is scroll down below the video, click that join button, and select any of the tiers and join, and you will be supporting my channel. And if you don't want to do that, then you can check out my Patreon, the link's in the description below, patreon.com slash cryptogrounds. I have quite a bit of stuff there, including backgrounds, merch, Discord roles, all that good stuff. Anyways, thank you very much for watching to the very end. I hope you guys all have an amazing day and night. Thanks for watching. This is Zach at Cryptogrounds, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.